Okay everybody, thanks for joining me today in the shop. Uh, on the last video we refit some of the bearings on this uh, trans frame. In this video we're going to go ahead and reassemble the Maestro suspension and uh, it's very very important in this that we get uh, the tensions right with the torque wrench and that we assemble everything in the correct order because if you don't then it can cause some serious damage to your bike so I'm gonna go through everything very very in-depth um, and I hope you enjoy the video so these parts are a little bit gross they've got old grease on them they've got just some dirt from from being used uh, some old Loctite on them so I'm going to use a uh, little bit of mineral spirits mixed with water and a toothbrush and we're gonna just clean some of this off and get them nice and clean for the new installation see if we can get some of that that blue Loctite off of there A few moments later. Before we go any further, this Maestro suspension system comes with a lot of these little spacers, and there's a few different types. This particular one it goes on the bottom of the shock, um, but the purpose of these spacers is very, very, very important, and I'm going to show you with this example here. Uh, if you look um, on the, see, if you look here uh, on the lip of this bolt, uh, there's a little raised center piece. And that center piece is the exact right size to fit the inner race of this bearing. And like I talked about in the bearing video, the inner race should stay put and it should be kind of squeezed in place. And that allows this outer race, uh, the interface between the outer race and the interface, the bearings, to actually be doing all the work. So this inner race shouldn't really be moving at all. When we tighten this bolt up to the appropriate spec, then what happens is that bolt pushes on that bearing race and grabs onto it while allowing the outside to spin freely relative to the inside. So it has its own spacer built in on the outside. What we have to do is we have to make sure that all of the appropriate spacers get put on the inside so that it can push against those spacers too and still be able to turn. Okay, so we're going to start here with the pin that holds in the lower portion of the shock. It also holds the lower rocker arm to the frame. Um, this pin consists of one fairly large pin. Now you don't want to get this one confused with this one. Uh, this one is designed for the same position but in the back so this is we're going to get to this one later uh, additionally um, these two spacers are one of only four spacers that fit this diameter I have a lot of these smaller spacers we're not going to use these just yet and the only other spacers that fit this diameter are these large spacers that are sort of tapered. They have sort of a cone shape to them. And these also are going to go with the pin in the back. Uh, additionally, this end cap here uh, you can see is the one that matches the diameter of the bolt head. There is another nut right here. It looks very similar. Uh, this one has the torque spec on it and it is much, much larger. This is going to go with a different set. The order that this is all going to go together is we're going to put the bolt in first, obviously, and then this end of the bolt is going to go directly up against the bearing on the rocker, the lower rocker arm. Then we're going to put the spacer between the bearing on the lower rocker arm and the bearing in the frame. We're going to put these two spacers around the rear shock around the lower eyelid of the rear shock and then this spacer again between the frame and the rocker arm and then this is going to go on the end uh, this is going to go on the drive side which means we're going to start inserting from the non-drive side just like always it's very very important that we put grease 
uh, on all these surfaces. Uh, in this particular case, the grease is not there to lubricate any kind of transition. The grease is there simply to help protect against water ingress, causing these to rust. On this, I like to start by putting the spacers on and putting this lower rocker arm on. And once you've got your grease in those grooves, you can just drop these spacers right in those little grooves and then just set this in place right there. Now we can put our bolt in and the bolt is going to enter through the non-drive side through the spacers. Then we're going to put our first uh, shock spacer on the bolt and then push the bolt through enough that it contacts our finger at the end. Then we take our other shock spacer we put it sorry my hands blocking we put it on this side and now we have our bolt that's holding one of those spacers in and our other spacer being held in on the other side. Now uh, this particular shock is not the final shock that's going on it's just going to be temporary which means I have to do all this again but uh, one thing I want to mention is just be sure that you orient the shock in the appropriate direction and that you don't forget to put that little rubber band on. Uh, so I'm going to orient the shock and then once I have that in I just wiggle around until I get this bolt to go through the other side and then the bolt goes through to the other end and then we can put this nut on. Now before we put the nut on I'm going to wipe a little bit of this excess grease off and I'm going to apply a small amount of Loctite. Uh, the Loctite especially on these lower pivots is going to be really really helpful for preventing them from slipping later on. And I like to put that little bit of Loctite on the threads for the bolt itself but you can do it however you like. I'm going to take my 19 millimeter wrench put it on the nut and then just drive the bolt in. I'm using my torque wrench and as you can see on the bolt head it says 15 newton meters is the appropriate torque spec there we go. And now as you can see, this moves quite freely. And then this moves freely as well. So we know that none of those bearings are pinched anywhere. Let's move on to the next linkage. Next up we have the upper rocker arm. Now on all Maestro suspension, current level Maestro suspension. Uh, this is a carbon part whether the bike is aluminum or not. So you want to be careful not to do too much squeezing here. Um, and uh, we're going to install the uh, lower linkage and the upper linkage. This is what mounts to the upper of the shock and this is what mounts to the frame. Uh, for the frame you're going to need the long skinnier bolt. Uh, you can see this one is the larger size. We're going to need the skinny one. And you're going to need this stainless steel bolt that goes on the other side of it. This threads in to the female end like that. And you're going to need two of the smaller spacers. You, guys, you should have six total of these. You need two of them for this. Next up for the trunnion mount, we're going to need these two smaller bolts like this. And you can see there's larger versions as well. We need the smaller one along with two of these spacers as well. Let's get going. Next up we have the upper rocker arm. On the upper rocker arm we install um, the bearing spacers against this portion right here because the outside where the bolt is doesn't require a spacer. So what I like to do, and I've already pre-greased all of this, what I like to do is I like to go ahead and put the spacers in like that and the grease that I've added can act as sort of a glue to hold it in place and as you do this just pay close attention to the location of those spacers. 
and make sure they don't get pushed out of their spot. Now we're going to put the pin in. It doesn't really matter what side this goes in from. There we go. And we've got it through the spacer, get it through the frame, through the spacer on the other side. And when you get to the spacer on the other side, you can use a wrench to kind of work that spacer around until it finds where it needs to go. And then once that's through all the way to the other side, we thread in the stainless bolt and then we hold on to the stainless bolt. So I'm holding on to this end with a four millimeter Allen key and on this end I'm just using my torque wrench. We're going to torque this to the recommended 11 newton meters. A super, super common mistake on these Maestro suspension systems is to leave the spacer out on this upper piece. I strongly, strongly recommend that you pay close attention and you make sure you get this right because if you don't put those spacers in there, the bike is going to feel terrible to ride and it's probably going to break this in half. Just like before, what I like to do is I like to put the spacers in and you see we're going to put the spacers on the inside of this bearing. Uh, so the bearing is going to go in between the upper part of this trunnion mount and the inner part of the bearing. And just like before you want to pay close attention to make sure that your, uh, your, your spacers get in there correctly. There's the first one, there's the second one, and then we torque to the appropriate 11 newton meters. Next up we're going to do the lower portion of the rear swing arm. This is going to require the last of these larger bolts. You can see this one is distinct because it has a much larger head on the bolt and it's got this uh, skinny part in the middle. Um, the spacers that we're going to use on these are those larger sized tapered spacers. And, uh, and then we have our uh, uh, nut here. Now the thing that's going to make this very, very different than what we've done on the other ones is that the flanged end of the bolt doesn't have the 8 millimeter uh, hex wrench. It doesn't have any hex wrench on it. Um, the threaded end has the hex side. So what's going to happen is when we put this on, it's normal threads. But when we put this on the bike, we're going to have to imagine turning this way, which is almost like unscrewing to, and holding this in place. So if you think about it, we're unscrewing this 8 millimeter bolt, and that's what's making it tighter. So this is going to be like a lefty loosey type situation. It's very, very counterintuitive. Uh, but it'll only go in one way, and that's the way it's going to be. Another very important piece of this puzzle is the special spacers that go on here. Um, this one is, as you can see, tapered, um, so it's very different than the ones that we had before. And um, this one is, again, going to go in between the uh, lower rocker arm here uh, and the, the bearing for the swing arm. Um, and the small side of the taper is going to go towards the rocker arm or away from the bearing. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put both of these in here. Again, I've already greased this ahead of time. And then opposite to what we did on the front of this rocker arm, we're going to run this from the other side. So this is going to come from the drive side through to the non-drive side. Now you'll notice I didn't use any Loctite on the upper bolts. 
Um, you can use it on there if you like. I didn't because these lower ones are the ones that it's much, much more important to have that Loctite on because these are much more difficult to get to. Now I'm going to use my 19 millimeter wrench to hold this. And as you can see, I'm turning this as if I was loosening it, but really we are tightening it up. And that seems to be moving very, very well. On to the last pivot. Okay, last but not least, the upper swing arm attached to the upper rocker arm. Um, for this one, uh, we're again going to use these small spacers that we had six of. Uh, these are the last two. And they are going to go in between the inner of the bearing race and the outer of right there. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in like so. And on here, I'm going to put that spacer in and then I'm just going to insert the bolt just enough to keep that spacer lined up. Do that again on this side. And I've already put a bit of blue Loctite on these threads up here. Um, on pre-2017 models, uh, these upper rocker arms had the flange of the bolt on the inside of the frame and they worked very similar to the last bearing that we did where you have to sort of unscrew them into place. Uh, but on 2017 and up models on this newest range of Maestro, uh, it works pretty normally. There you have it, all finished. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit like. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. And thank you for watching.